damage to the reputation and in in some cases even shut down in the business also so cyber security helps ensure the business continuity by preventing and minimizing the impact of cyber attacks here so that is what the importance of cyber security and next is compliance compliance with regulations so just try to maintain some notes guys so when you go for the interview basis it may help you a lot why why cyber security is important mostly they ask a question related to what is cyber security first so don't give a single word answer there like uh, uh, protecting the data or uh, securing the communication don't go with that make sure give some proper definition so process of protecting the data systems networks uh, programs from cyber attacks or unauthorized access that is what cyber security we call and cyber security is a domain in that we have multiple programs like ethical hacking penetration testing sock analyst uh, malware analyst or threat intelligence incident responder like there are many different uh, programs and roles you can see in that you can see some hundreds of program okay so and why it is important in a sense tell them protecting the sensitive data safeguarding the critical infrastructure of the organization maintaining the business continuity and going with compliance with the regulation checking that so why because many like compliance and regulations are nothing but here the policies like are they maintaining the proper guidelines or not proper information standards or not that is what the uh, things we have to be assessment here every time so compliance with the regulations is nothing but here or many industries are subject to restrict the regulations where that requires the organizations to protect the sensitive data here so failure to compile with these regulations can result in significant fines and legal issues or even legal actions can they can take for the organization so cyber security helps ensure the compliance with the regulations with some standards like there are some standards like a hipaa gdpr pci dss payment card gateway industry right so there are many many programs you can see in this so compliances is nothing but the policies for example there is a crime happen in your company or something you are holding the data of a client so that client went to court and has registered a case on your company so to investigate that police will come to your office or to your place and they'll ask you please provide your data we need to investigate so at that time you can't tell that we don't have data we won't maintain the data like that why because it's a mandatory to maintain the data of your clients minimum 6 months minimum to minimum you have to at least maintain 6 months if not you're going to face some legal issues there. right so that is a policy so you need to implement some compliance and governance here for the organizations right and even preventing the privacy or sorry preserving the privacy and uh, protecting the national security well uh, this is uh, only the introduction part right so i don't brought any any document here so in future we are starting the networking all those things right definitely i'll give the documentation for you no worries so today it's just an introduction i'm giving you all right so yeah importance of cyber security in that protecting the national security also so why because they can also compromise the national security by targeting the critical infrastructure and even government systems and a military intellectual or even military installations also so cyber security is critical for protecting the national security and prevent the cyber warfare in future you may see the cyber warfare right so these are the some prevention of cyber attacks as the last part so these are the some importance of cyber security right uh so duration of class it will be one and a half to two hours every day and is there any records or books to write obviously they'll give the recording sessions i think so so the team will contact you back so they will update you don't worry
Okay. Right. So this is why the cyber security is important for you guys. So make sure whatever I'm writing in this session, just note down that key points here. You got my point? So in between, you have the exams also. Remember, you'll have an exam on the topics, whatever we are discussing, all right? And you'll have the task. You have to do the, your assignments and you have to submit that to me. Okay. So make sure about that. So try to attend each and every session. So timings, recording sessions, all will be taken care by the team that they will convey you. Okay. So if you have any, any doubts related to the timings and the recording sessions, you can contact to the team. They'll help you in that. And if you have any doubt related to the subject, yeah, you guys can ask me related to the subject. Got it. All right, so what we discussed till now, so what is cyber security and what are the roles and responsibilities we have in cyber security and importance of cyber security. Now we'll start with the networking part and why we need to know the networking is that necessary in the sense, of course, it is necessary to know about the networking part. For example, if you want to hack a system, what, or what, what is the requirement for the hacker? What he what he have to have to hack that system? Hmm? Network connection, password, IP. Uh, yeah, Chaitanya said IP address. I agree for that. So if I ask you what is an IP and how IP work, who is giving this IP address? Do you have any idea about that? Internet protocol. Yeah, I know it's an internet protocol. Who we'll gives that IP address? ISP. From where ISP is getting that IP address? And which IP address we use? Again, we have private IP and public. So we don't have any idea about these things. So there are a lot of stuff again in this. So to know these things, then only you can able to perform that. So without having knowledge on these points, what is an IP address, how the data travels from one system to another system, what are these operating systems? So we can't do anything to be frankly saying. So that is why we have to start with the network. I'm not diving deep into the networking. Whatever the things required for the cyber security, that is what I'm doing here. Right. So. Let's start with the networking part. So why networking in the sense, as I told you, cyber security, what is the term cyber is used for? Internet. So if I ask you from where we are getting this internet, from where we are getting this internet from, I hope you guys are using internet. Now you guys are also connected with me through internet only, using the internet only. How we are getting this internet? from satellite, from broadband. Very good, good answers actually. Through net. <laughs> Internet is nothing but the network only. Like what exactly, how we are getting that? WLAN, Ethernet. Okay. That's it. Broadband, satellite and Ethernet. That's it. Uh, how many of you are from IT background, like uh, there is, is there any computer science or computer related persons here? I got one question here. Okay. From me, is from IT. Fiber optics. Actually, you're getting the internet from cables here. Getting the internet from the cables. 
You don't believe that? I'll show you. So actually we use a cable called op fiber optics. Okay. So internet is a kind of an interconnection of two or more networks here. Okay, it's an interconnection of two or more networks. Uh, if you see there is a submarine cable. Visit this website. It will show you the a complete cable connected. Can you see? These are all the cables which will provide the internet. Underground seawater, they'll go with the connection. Right, so if you Google it about uh, underwater internet cables also, we'll get some images. So they'll connect through these cables only. Globally, we can communicate through these cables only. Uh, obviously, they'll dig and they'll go with the connection part. So you can see this is the cable which they use, optical fiber. Right. So I'll tell you uh, an example here. Imagine there is a mobile. Imagine this is a, a device we have, a computer, a desktop you can see. And this is a mobile we have. So there is a, a 2 GB of data in my mobile, which I want to share with the desktop. So how will you share the data now? Now you have to share this 2 GB of data from your mobile to from your device. What source you use here to do that activity? Hotspot, 2 GB. Mm -hmm. As your name crazy, through Wi-Fi or USB cable, OTG. Bluetooth, okay. How many of you think we can share with the Bluetooth? See, I have given size of the data also here, 2 GB. It's not 1 MB or 2 MB to share that with the Bluetooth or any hotspot. A 2 GB, a huge file we have, which I have to share from mobile to device. So we use USB. Why not Bluetooth? Why not Bluetooth? So I won't suggest Bluetooth. Why? Because here, uh, the signal, if you go far, obviously the signal will be decreased and there is a chance of data loss. Means the connection won't be stable here. There is an unstable connection every time if, we are a, if I use Bluetooth. So when I use cable, like a USB cable, it will be the constant and it will be fast. Same here also, whenever you surf anything like google.com, facebook.com in your computer, it will go to the Google server, right? How it is going to your Google server? Through these cables only. They use a light speed. The data will travel in a light speed and reach the server and get back the response to you. That will be happening in milli fraction of seconds. So through these cables only, again, again, they use these cables only fiber optics and these cables are maintained by the tier one companies and if you if you google it india we have five node node points one two one is in mumbai one is in uh kochi trivandrum tutukorni and even in chennai recently we have in andhra pradesh also i don't know why they removed again that part so recently they have implemented in other places also so if you take any of these cable let me click on this if you click on that cable, you can see where are the LAN points here and how many kilometers of range the cable is. It's 20,000 kilometers length of cable. And who are the owners of this cable? You'll Verizon, Sri Lanka Telecom, Bangladesh, right? Pakistan Telecommunications, Saudi, Saudi Telecommunications, like that. There are many people who are involved in this cable. So now this cable is managed and maintained by these people only. They are the owners. So we call them as a tier one companies. And you can see the landing points where the cable is landing in Mumbai, Chennai. So means it travels like this. Your data also will travel through this cable in this way only. Caught my point? And can you able to see is there any starting and end point here? Is there any starting and end point? Can you able to see that? Hmm? 
there is no starting and end point here everything is interconnected everything is interconnected here so now we are getting the internet from cables only that is what tier one company like if you take india the tier one companies are like tata geo bsnl bsnl of verizon google and at&t these are the some companies where you can see as a tier one so tier one is nothing but the cables who are maintaining once the cable has been installed again it will come to the india right from here Again, from here, they'll distribute regionally, right? So up to here, the tier one company will be taking care of that cable through under the ocean. And from here, again, it will distribute regionally, right? So that will be done by tier two companies. Like your ATEL, or BSNL, or VSNL, these people. And from there to the local. Like your ISPs, like Hathway, Geofiber, or Act Fiber. We call them as a ISP, Internet Service Provider. And from that to you, end user, end user in the sense to your home. So up to your router, if you observe, there is a Ethernet cable only. Have you observed that? Up to your router, router also connected to an Internet cable. And that router is providing as a WLAN, which is wireless local area net. But up to the router, it is connected through the cable only. So you're getting the internet from the cables. Remember that. Is that clear, everyone? How you're getting the internet? And who is maintaining the internet? Is that clear? Yes or no? Say something. Yes. Right. So this is this is how you're getting the internet as maintained by the companies. And when internet started actually. When internet started. And who started the internet? January 1st, 1983. So actually it started in 1969, October 29. And the first internet was done by the ARPANET. This was the first internet. Hmm. So it's an advanced research project agency. Okay. So this was the first real network to run on packet switching technology. It was new at the time. So it is implemented in 1969. Okay. So, and the first connection also made between the four computers. You can see this was the first internet connection, first internet connection. So University of California, Los Angeles and University of California, San Barbara and University of Utah and Stanford Research Unit. So between these four computers, they started the first communication. So computer of Stanford and uh, uh, University of California for the first time, they started communication and in effect, they were the first post on what would one day become the internet. So the first message sent across the network was supposed to be login, but reportedly the link between the two colleges crashed on the letter G. And the first message also the sent is login on. 
right in 1970 so an orphanet network was established between the harvard mit and bbn the company that created the interface message processor so where computers used to connect to the network at the time 1970 and later in 1972 i think these two people of winchef and bob park actual birth of internet took place at this point 1972 so before that uh, the communication is between the uh, local area network only means system to system only not from network to network so getting my point system to system in the sense uh, only from my system to your system if there is a cable we can communicate through that cable but what if i want to communicate with the person who is in another network for example you guys are connected to your home network right your hotspot or your mobile data or to your wifi you connected right now i hope so and i have connected to my home network right and i am having my own network and you guys are having your own network means here two different networks are able to communicate right that is happened because of these two people only these two people made that winchef and bob con got it right so they made a project called interneting project okay right so what this project do is they wanted to link a different network together so that one host on one network could communicate with a host on a second okay so different networks here. so that is how the things work that is how the made this project happen that is how we are able to get over the networks all right so later on many changes happen they implemented the tcp ip stack in 1974 so uh, which will work on intra network basis and later uh, uh, they started the pc modem spam in bond uh, usenet the first emitodi also brought in uh in 1982 right so like that there are many things happen and in 1990 the end of orphanet happened the end of orphanet by because of this person tim benrusley he is the one who bought the www for you which is nothing but world wide web So, what is the use of this World Wide Web? What it do? What the www do? Anyone? Hmm? When you type this Google dot com or uh, yeah i know it's world wide web what it do exactly accessing the links or refers to all the public websites or pages that users can access on their local computers right so it try to get the links or web pages using this uh, hypertext transfer protocol exactly serves links to the server right so that was happened and you can connect globally also right so he made that and html http protocol web servers world wide web all this can be done with the help of this protocol and these things happen in 1990 got it and the first search engine also happened at that right so the first search engine is it is actually the search engines like google we are using so it is Archie Index. This was the search engine. So it created the first search engine for this school project, and the search engine was known as the Archie Index. Here, got it. So like that, there are many changes happen. You can see now the technology is AI complete. So the first first webcam happened. Netscape Navigator has been implemented. First webmail 
a web based mail 1999 or 1996 i think hotmail was the first uh, web mail service and later in 1997 web web blogs or web blogs or content in 1998 we got google right so like that wikipedia in 2001 right and vivo ip goes mainstream in 2003 so like that we got many changes now you can see complete ai the advanced level of technology you are going to see all right so that is how the things happen and that is where the internet started is that clear everyone so the first internet was built and developed by the advanced research project agency which was funded by the us defense and that was started between four universities and the first message they sent is login later in 1992 the two persons finishoff and bockhorn created a project called interneting project this project will help us to communicate with different networks so one network to the another network that is how we can communicate in right now. and later many changes happen in 1990 drp is nothing but defense advanced research project agency that is what funded by the us defense right so later you got www and later you can see many changes happen so this is a, a brief history about the internet clear everyone how you are getting the internet and when the internet started hmm. right and next we'll move on to the network so what is networking here any idea anyone networking connection of two or more devices that i can say as a computer networks computer networks are nothing but yeah interconnection of two or more devices or more computers here so networking is nothing but it's a it's a process of interacting with others to exchange some information right clear and one of the example you can take for this network you can say it's an interconnection or more devices that is what the network you can say and when it comes to the computer network same interconnection of two or more computer devices sorry network is nothing but interconnection of two or more networks all right an example for the network you can take is internet only that is an example for your net okay when it comes to the computer networks yeah so computer networks is nothing but here interconnection of two or more computers that is what computer networks here and in that we have different types of networks so what are the different types of networks we have an area anyone yeah exactly lan wan man so are you done with that part i started is karthik explain you about that no okay mm -hmm. oh what pretty good answers here so let's get into the computer networks here so what is the use of this computer network can anyone what is the use of this computer data you guys are doing right we can share the data 
you can share their resources, data, applications, all these things using these computer networks only. So computer network is nothing but here a group of computers linked to each other that enables the computer to communicate with another computer and share their resources, applications, data, and various domains across the world, right? And in that we have different types of networks. So using these networks, we can do that activity. So in that, as you know, one is LAN, WAN and MAN, which is local area network, wide area network, and metropolitan area network. Right. And then apart from that, we have PAN, which is personal area network, WLAN, wireless local area network. And we have uh, CAN, campus area network. And uh, Else. It's local area network, wide area network, metropolitan area network, and personal area network. And this is wireless local area network and campus area network we have. And we have a VPN, virtual private network also we have. And storage area networks we have. Right. So like that, there are many uh, different types of uh, uh, networks you can see. And what what this network represents actually, anyone? What this network represents? Chinna area network. Yeah, geographical range. It represents the geographical range of a network here. The connection capacity or the length, the data it travels, right? So when it comes to the land, which is a local area network. So this is a LAN here, which we have. So LAN is everything is interconnected to each and every device, and this will work within this network. Imagine this is one network. So if I want to send the data from system A to system B, it will travel all this along and it will reach the destination. What if I want to send the data to the network, which to the device, which is in another network? This is network two, this is network one, imagine. So same like this, if I want to send the data from one device to another device and that device is in another network. So at the time, what kind of, or what type of network it use? LAN in the sense, within this network only, it will work. They can communicate within that building or within that office, they can communicate. Means the data is transferred at extremely faster rate in local area network. And local area network provides higher security. Why? Because they are communicating within that network itself. What if I want to communicate with another network using this LAN? So it, you, you may use that as a fan or you can use as a, a man basis also. If it is within the city, from one band, one branch to another branch, then you can use metropolitan area network. If it is in city range, so imagine this is a main branch. This local area network is main branch, which is in somewhere in Hyderabad, in Amirpet, example. And there is another branch. Okay, there is another branch and another system. And this is this branch is in Hyderabad only, somewhere in Dilshubnagar. Okay, example. So now, if I want to share the resources from this network to this network, that will be work within the metropolitan area network. At that time, it use man service. So getting my point? Within that city range, if you are communicating, then you can call that as a metropolitan area network. Mm, pillar number 103. I'll call out not tomorrow. Right. So you can see these things. So metropolitan area network is a network that covers a large geographical area by interconnecting a different land to form a large network. 
So government agencies use a MAN to connect to the citizens and private industries. So MAN, a various lands are connected to each other through a telephone exchange line or through a optical fiber. So the most widely used protocol in MAN is frame relay or ATMs or ISDN, ADSL, these kind of things they use in this. Right. So this is metropolitan area. So it has a higher range than local area network. And when it comes to the wide area network, this is a wide area network. So where it extends over the large geographical area such as states and countries in country range. Yeah, as you said, so it's states and country bases, they use this wide area network so it's a quite bigger than a bigger network than the LAN and MAN so a wide area network is not limited to a single location it spams over a large geographical area through a telephone line or fiber optical cables or even they use satellite links also so the internet is one of the bigger or biggest van in the world internet just now we have seen internet how it comes so wide area network is widely used in the field of business, governments, and educational purpose. All right. So that is what wide area network. Again, see different lines are connected to each other from different locations, states, and country bases. That is why we call this as a, a wide area network. Okay. Clear, everyone? And when it comes to the PAN, anyone? PAN. Personal area network example take your bluetooth personal area network so you can take as a bluetooth is your pan or uh, hotspot or you use nfc's right so this are all comes under the yeah zigbee yeah, great man zigbee is one of the protocol right so you can see these are the things which will work in the PAN basis. Restricted to a small area. Right. So personal area network is a network arranged within an individual person or typically within the range of 10 meters like that. So it is used for connecting the computer devices of personal use. It's known as a personal area network. Right. So most probably it covers around 30 feet range like that. Okay. So personal computer devices that are used to develop the personal area network that are laptops, mobile phones, media players, and even PlayStation also. All right. So that is what the personal area network. And when it comes to the campus area network, any idea? Hmm? Within the campus only, we can able to communicate them. Right. So not on organization level, campus in the sense, college basis. So you have college uh, blocks, right? Block A, block B, block C. Within that campus area only, you can able to communicate. Campus area. Network. Right. Same like your metropolitan area network, but here different sub branches, but here within that college range only. In college, have we have block A, we have block B, and block C. So everything is interconnected here, right? So within this college range only, they can able to communicate. If they come out of the college, that won't matters with the campus area, right? So within that campus only, they can able to communicate. And when it comes to the VPN, anyone? Virtual private network. What this VPN do? What is the use of VPN? Anyone? What is the difference of VPN and proxy? Have you heard about this term called proxy? There is a proxy also. So what's the difference of VPN and proxy here? Data encryption. Great. Okay. Apart from that, Mm 
معنويه privacy and security okay connection connects to the other country server internet proxy will connect to the other country servers to manipulate presence over the internet proxy is like a gateway while vpn is like an encrypted tunnel a grid who said this taramia great so create fake ip yeah so only knows how many of them think people are thinking about it's a fake ip address like i mean it hide our ip it mask our ip and it will provide another ip but actually why it is doing is remember actually we are creating a private network here whatever the network we are using is a public network it's a public network when we use a application like vpn for example this is your system okay this is your system and we use a, a tool like vpn here imagine this is a vpn server or vpn service so when we connect to the vpn and uh, the vpn will provide a separate tunnel for you a separate tunnel and that's connect you to the server so actually when you connect to the vpn vpn will take your ip instead of your ip it will use another ip why because this is the server it is requesting for so obviously the vpn server ip will be used and it's sent to the server now server is getting the request from system a or from vpn what do you think is the server getting the request from system a or from system uh, sorry from vpn from vpn actually so it doesn't know about this system now got it and even if you see if you if you if your brothers or sisters who are working in mnc's from work from home if it is a work from home uh, ask them like first they'll connect to the vpn actually why why they won't allow you to work uh, within your network premises why they ask you to connect to the vpn through vpn again they'll connect to the server why not directly from your network to the server why because our network is a public network so there is a chance of uh, uh, attacks means there won't be any privacy here you got that there won't be any privacy here so that's why they create a private network through this tunneling network process and connect to this server so in that process it changes your ip it will hide your ip it mask and it will give the a server ip there and the difference of vpn and proxy yeah obviously it's a gateway based scenario as you said and it provides security where vpn will encrypt your target sorry uh, encrypt your packets vpn is completely secure it encrypts your packet here it encrypts your packet and it encrypts complete application means all the all complete os if if i if i am using vpn in my system now it won't allow only for that particular application it encrypts entire system when it comes to the proxy only application based only that application will be proxy means private, private tunnel will be created and here there won't be any security this will, I, I can't say that uh, com completely it won't provide any security it will provide the security compared to the vpn it provides a less security here right so vpn a proxy or these two are online services where that hides your ip address by rerouting your internet traffic through a remote server but a proxy works only within single application or service while a vpn secures all the internet traffic and encrypt it for extra security and privacy also that is what you can see in this vpn and proxy got it is that clear about the vpn so where vpn will provide a a private network for you so through that private network you can connect to your target server that's how the things work is that clear everyone any doubts related to the proxy here yes no say something is this session boring for you guys what what happened there is no response hmm clear great
and there will be a, a kind of thing if it is boring for you just you can leave from this okay all right so there is an enterprise private network also for you so where they mostly use in the enterprise level in business organizations they use okay so like a, um, it's a kind of uh, a private network again so it's a custom design network so which is built and operated by the business to share the company's resources so it connects a company's office across different geographical regions and is optimized to ensure that a bandwidth uh, uh, centric applications run smoothly without uh, bundling the network here so for that reason they use this uh, enterprise private network so only organizations use this service right is that clear so these are the some different types of uh, networks you can see and even as i told you there is a, a storage area network also so where you can store a huge amount of data so it will manage the data from one network to another network so it will maintain that so network storage is uh, a kind of business continuity so just now we discussed about the business continuity right so where they will handle the servers in multiple places and store the information whenever they retrieve so kind of a backup services so that will be managed by the storage area networks only so business that want to stay ahead and need to find ways to optimize the data access and data storage so this ensures that the important backups are done on a regular basis and they manage a big data also so one way to achieve these aims and more is by using a storage area network right so that is what sans do so network behind the server so it is a special purpose so high speed computer networks that provides any to any access to storage so the main purpose of this san is to transfer the data between the different storage devices and between the computer networks and storage devices here so that is what sans do so like that you have different types of networks so where you can go through all these things right so just recall them so these are the very basic things which we are discussing okay so first we'll complete the basic part so today what we have discussed and i'll give an idea what we are going to learn in networking okay so i'll give an idea so we are going with network fundamentals so in this we are discussing about the internet just now we discussed about the internet how it works and the computer networks and its types and in next session we are going to dis we are going to start uh, the network topologies we'll discuss about the network topologies the structure of network and the arrangement of a network how it works and then we'll go with one of the important topic which is osi layers this is nothing but osi model and tcp ip model so once we done with this osi model we'll move on to the network addresses we'll discuss about the network addresses so that is about the logical address and physical address okay so that is what you going to see in the network addresses about ip address and mac address we are going to discuss and we'll discuss some protocols some important protocols and port numbers and then we'll discuss about the os architecture and we'll set up a linux will set up a linux mission in our system then we'll start the ethical hacking part is that clear everyone so this is what we are going to cover in network fundamentals so i i am going to cover whatever the required things or what are the necessary topics for this i was agreed that is what we are discussing i'm not going in detail about that 
just what are the important topics which are required for the cyber security i'm going with that okay if you want to real if you if you guys are really interested in networking if you want to do a courses like ccna uh, i personally suggest there will be there is a youtube channel called networking so you can go through that that will discuss when it comes to the information security what report you or sub you want to submit that how to submit report for information security what report so vulnerability assessment in a sense, so for example, uh, if, if your target is a website, imagine. So if the website is providing any mail ID, you can contact them through that mail ID. Or there is a platforms like uh, uh, HackerOne and Buckcrowd. There itself, you can submit your report. So if it is an Android application, definitely they'll give the mail, right? The application mail ID, contact or something related to that. So you can contact them and tell that what bug you have found, give the POC proof of concept for them and disclose that. Right. Is that clear everyone? So we'll stop it for today here. Okay. So we'll continue remaining part. So if you have any issues related to the timing or anything, just contact to the team. They'll help you in that. So I hope you learned something from this class or from this topic. So if you have any doubts, you guys can ask me or else, yeah, you guys can go to leave. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session. Have a great day, guys. See you. See you next time. Yeah, thank you. So guys, just go with the feedback also, everyone. So just go through the links which I have shared in the chat box. Thank you, thank you guys. See you next time.